Hello everyone, it's Friday and you're watching Within the Frame where we delve deeper into the top stories not only in South Korea but across the globe. I'm Kim bo -kyung. The Mobile World Congress telecommunications tech show ended its four-day run in Barcelona, Spain. MWC was back in a full scale this year, boasting more than 2,400 exhibitors, attracting more than 88,000 in-person attendees from over 200 countries. What were the key points this year, and what notable technologies did South Korean tech companies bring, and what were some other hotly debated issues? For an in-depth analysis on one of the largest tech shows in the world along with CES, we invited Eric Song Soo Kim, a junk professor and a founder of Data Crunch Global, into the studio. Professor Kim, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. All right, and we also have Ben Wood, Chief Analyst and CMO from CCS Insight on the line from London. Ben, it's good to have you with us. Great to be with you. Thank you so much for having me along. Right, Ben, first question to you. The world's largest mobile phone exhibition hosted over 88,000 attendees from more than 200 countries. Now, this is after being halted for two years due to the pandemic and held on a smaller scale in 2022, which is was last year. Now, could we say 2023 was back to full scale and how was the atmosphere there? It was a vintage uh, MWC. It's an event that I've been attending for over 25 years. I've seen many great shows, but this year it felt like there was energy at the show. Um, back in 2019, there were nearly 110,000 people there. Last year, a more muted show with 65,000 people. Uh, the Chinese delegations in particular were missing due to the COVID regulations and restrictions. This year, as you said, 88,000 people real buzz, real excitement, despite the uh, big clouds hanging over the industry in terms of the macroeconomic uh, challenges and some of the geopolitical challenges as well. But it was a pleasure to be there. Right. So there was amazing excitement and energy there. Now, Professor Kim, the four-day program kicked off under the theme of Velocity Unleashing Tomorrow's Technology Today. Now, what is this theme about and what innovative technology was being showcased based on the theme? I think this year's um, event was very, very meaningful because we come back, came back in full scale. Um, and also we're in the middle and probably the um, hike of the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. um, just this year, we understood the power of generative AI and how it can be an impact to the society and a lot of business sectors. And so new technologies are being adopted and are emerging as a technology that we can utilize today. So um, the theme was velocity. So the speed of you know, change is very, very fast in this world. And it's unleashing tomorrow. But I would say that we envisioned how technology is being applied today as well. Mainly, there were a um, couple of categories that was very, very meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, the first category was 5G and 6G technology. And we also seen advancements in AI and also in UAM and Reality Plus, and also in robotics. Right, we're going to tap on uh, each category one by one, but first, Professor, uh, I need to tap on the Samsung Electronics, of course. Uh, it showed off the Galaxy S23 series' advanced camera system and its latest 5G solutions as well as uh, the next generation 6G, like you mentioned. What was your takeaway after seeing such uh, innovative technologies by Samsung? What's interesting about human beings is we try to share our experience mm. and try to um, see things from um, storytelling and, you know, photography and video and now um, AR and VR technologies. That's just the human nature to share our experience and to see things more vividly. So in that sense, I think um, Samsung's, you know, innovation in the camera technology is very, very important. Mm because that's human instinct, basic instinct to, um, you know, crave for a more vivid um, image. So the 200 million pixel is something that's very innovative. And I think Samsung is taking a um, good lead mm -hmm. in the um, competition in the smartphone industry um, based on the camera technology. But that also means that in order to um, utilize this technology, Telecommunication technology also has to advance because we are transmitting large scale images and videos. So Samsung is actively participating in open RAN, 
uh, RAN is a radio access network, so you mm -hmm. can consider it as a telecommunication network. So what's different from open RAN and the traditional RAN is that the traditional RANs, you have to install softwares for every station. But Open RAN is running based on a cloud system, so you don't have to install softwares for, for every station. It is centrally controlled, which means that um, AI-assisted technology can optimize the network and increase efficiency mm. to better assist large-scale data transmission. And Samsung is innovating their technology in um, you know, pioneering the telecommunication technology and that was well demonstrated um, during this year's event. All right, so interestingly, the camera system was very advanced, but uh, we could also see uh, Samsung trying to pioneer the telecommunications yes. part. Right, interesting. Now, uh, Ben, meanwhile, another aspect of the event to focus on was the Chinese contingent as they were absent at CES earlier this year. Now, among them, Huawei used the MWC as a chance, an opportunity to show off its technology even amid sanctions from Western nations. That is both what was reportedly 50% bigger this year. What innovative ideas did Huawei bring and what uh, significance did its uh, presence have? Well, um, absolutely, the Huawei presence was spectacular. But just to comment on the previous question around Samsung's um, presence at the show, they had a spectacular booth again. I mean, certainly in the Hall 3 area where all the handset manufacturers were, Samsung's presence, Samsung's branding, the look and feel of Samsung, which I think has been very much led by President YH Lee made a big impact. But turning to Huawei, um, their stand was enormous. They took over the whole of Hall 1, massive, massive statement of intent from them, trying to show that they are refusing so I let the sanctions that have been impo imposed by the US administration stop them from growing their business. They had technology demonstrations across every aspect of 5G, um, new um, elements such as standalone 5G, um, which they were pushing hard. They also talked about 6G, they had devices. And I think despite the fact it's very difficult for them to trade um, in even Western Europe in some markets, they saw a show where there were visitors from over 200 countries and still massive potential. So this is a company that's not going away and they saw MWC as a vehicle to show that they are still in business and they are still hungry. Right, I see. But Ben, one more question to you. Huawei was just a part of a larger Chinese delegation with other mobile phone makers like Oppo and Xiaomi showcasing their tech too. In your interview with El Pais, you mentioned that they are keen to establish themselves as the third alternative to Apple and Samsung in European markets. Now, what did they show and was it enough to call themselves a third alternative? Well, it's the, the presence of the Chinese manufacturers, um, Oppo, Honor, Xiaomi, OnePlus, Techno, and many of them there, really was another example of the Chinese looking to grow share in Western Europe. So you know, they have a tremendous home market advantage where they have scale in China, but in most cases, they're finding it very tough to trade in the US market. So they think Western Europe is where they need to go. They are keen to try and capture what I call the third slot. So Apple and Samsung are the market leaders by far. They are the brands of choice. But in most cases, um, the carriers, the network operators, the retailers do want some kind of choice. And so they look to find a third player. And these are the companies that want to do that. So they're doing this by bringing innovative new technology to the market. And they are certainly trying to challenge Samsung in particular in the Android space. So Samsung has established itself very well with these types of foldable products that we can see here and with the so the flip and the um, fold, which you can see here. But we saw other innovative products from people like um, Honor. So they introduced their own folding device, which you can see here, a beautifully engineered device with a zero gap hinge. And Oppo, um, another Chinese manufacturer, have this very nice looking device, uh, which is a slightly different shape. So we're seeing a proliferation of products um, around the foldable space with Samsung, Honor, Oppo, Huawei and others all still making devices and looking to show their innovation credentials to build some market share. 
Wow, Ben, thank you for showing us uh, the phones, the foldable phones, because I, I've uh, never seen it before that was made from the Chinese manufacturers before, but thank you. <laughs> right, Professor, let's uh, go back to South Korean companies. So one of South Korea's largest mobile carriers, SK Telecom, uh, showcases its hyperscale AI model and other related services as well. And it also unveiled what you have uh, mentioned before, the UAM technology, which is urban air mobility. Now, could you elaborate more on these technologies? So SKT had a um, you know, very popular booth on this year. We had 50,000 people visiting SKT, and there was a lot of good comments mm -hmm. um, on the AI initiative SKT is taking. Um, it was mainly about A. Dot, um, the high, uh, high large scale AI model that SKT have built. And the innovations were that um, they were able to introduce a long term memory, meaning that they will remember what you had um, talked with the AI model. So, for example, they would remember your preference um, that you like pizza mm. when they would recommend. And so they will c catch all these details that you have already talked with the AI model and that's a great innovation. Mm. And also they have introduced something called a multi-model um, technology, which means that they don't only search text, but they search images and videos. Wow. So they can, um, you know, give responses um, through text and video as well. So that was the innovation that um, SKT had on the AI model. On UAM, um, we have to vision the future of who will control the um, network of UAM. It will be the mobile um, carriers mm -hmm. um, transmitting with the um, vehicle to assist aviation. And that's um, also already going on in the real world through vehicles. We have navigation, which is a um, you know, driving assisting you know, technology. So it's natural that um, mobile carriers will enter into the UAM business mm. because UAM is all about telecommunication, transmitting um, aviation assistance and even controlling aviation um, through their mobile um, telecommunication infrastructure. So that's why all of the telecommunication companies are very keen about the UAM business. And SK Telecom even integrated their AR and VR technology to demonstrate the future of mm -hmm. aviation. And that was a very um, pleasurable you know, event that we have seen through this um, conference. Wow, it's really interesting how the UAM technology is very much related to the telecommunications. Yes. Right. Now, Ben, uh, another South Korean mobile carrier, KT, also uh, presented its full-scale AI-related services, including digital communications and robots. Now, could you tell us more? Yeah, they, um, I mean, like um, SKT, they were um, showcasing a lot of AI solutions. And I must say on that uh, SK Telecom booth, the, uh, the airship ride they had, which was a virtual reality experience, was hugely popular. It was probably one of the big uh, kind of stories of the show. Uh, but for uh, SK, I mean, they were talking about AI, artificial intelligence, and the role that that is going to play. Uh, they had a, the Genie Lab solution there. They were looking at uh, digital experiences of uh, um, other affiliated companies like BC Card and KT Studio Genie. Um, and there was also another big feature of the booth, which was robotics. Um, they had a delivery robot there, and they had some technology around cooling and heating systems. Uh, and I think we're just seeing that technology is becoming such a pervasive story in daily lives, every aspect of what we do. And it was palpable from both of the Korean operators that they are trying to push the boundaries with connectivity, driving uh, richer, deeper solutions augmented with um, artificial intelligence. Right, I see. Now, Professor, it seems like AI technology was the focus of this year's MWC, and it is reportedly speeding, speeding up the so-called big blur trend, but I wonder what this is, and what should companies take into consideration the most when fusing AI technology with other sectors? Okay, so big blur is something that we always have seen, so mm. you can just consider it as crossing the boundaries. For example, um, is, in a telecommunication company, just a mobile 
you know, infrastructure, we see that there are also a contents provider, mm -hmm. and that has been, um, you know, common for decades. Right. So that kind of a cross-boundary um, businesses are going to emerge more deeper and deeper mm -hmm. as we um, develop these technologies and apply it. What's really important is that um, AI technology has the characteristics of dominance. Mm. So if you can um, pioneer the technology, then you will mostly um, monopolize or oligopolize the market. So that's why it's really important for traditional players to mm. get into the AI technology. And what we have to um, understand is, of course, the company should focus based on their um, core resources and capabilities of what they are good at to develop the technology. But we should take a more innovative step of um, investing dramatically to the new technologies, which we are seeing that SKT is doing and KT is doing right now. They're a telecommunication provider, but getting into AR, VR, even in UAM technologies. So um, that is what Korean companies should do. The strength of Korean companies is that we have both the DNA of a developing economy and a develop, developed economy, mm -hmm. meaning that we understand how to do um, techn technological leadership and strategic leadership. But at the same time, we have a culture of hardworking and fast you know, moving. Right. So that will be the um, you know, strength competitive advantage of Korean companies in developing these AI technologies. Right, so it would be very important to pioneer the AI technology because it has this unique characteristic of dominance. Yes. Very interesting. Now, Professor, I'd like to ask you one more. The so-called fair share row was among the hotly debated issue for this year. Could you tell us what the uh, row between telecom companies and the streaming providers is about and how do you believe it is going to unfold? Okay, so um, telecommunication infrastructure requires a heavy investment. Mm. And it also has a characteristic that's um, more like a public good that everyone would benefit on the um, infrastructure. And we also had this problem uh, with Kakao when it first emerged. Um, messaging services free through Kakao and telecommunication providers were charging um, MMS text messages. Mm -hmm. And they were saying that, okay, Kakao should pay us because they're using our grids. Right. Um, so these kind of discussions will emerge um, more and more as you know, the um, you know, platform providers mm -hmm. you know, advance. And the current problem is that Netflix or other content providers um, are using the grid for free and they're charging um, the you know, fees to their customers. And the customers are paying the grid fee, but the contents providers are not paying anything. So right. that's the argument for the telecommunication providers. Mm -hmm. I see that somehow the contents provider platforms should um, pay a share mm -hmm. in the infrastructure in the long run. So I think that will be the agreement mm -hmm. because in order to sustain the um, telecommunication infrastructure, we need investment and it's a public good. So. Um, the government sector and the private sector will eventually emerge to a um, conclusion that somehow the grids should be a shared investment. Right, right, I see. Now, we cannot leave out startup companies' technologies as well. Now, Ben, over a hundred startup companies presented their latest technologies and services as well, with some even receiving awards. What were noticeable technologies on show from Korean startup companies? Well, the show is absolutely vast and there are so many things to see and so many places to go that I didn't have a chance to see absolutely everything. But I always do try and visit the Korean pavilion because there are some interesting companies there. Uh, one that caught my eye was a company called Pet Now, who have developed an app uh, on smartphones which allows you to uh, create a, a biometric record of your dog or cat. Uh, and for every dog on its nose, the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the characteristics of its nose are like a human fingerprint. And uh, this company, Pet Now, have um, built the intelligence that uh, you can use your mobile phone to scan um, a pet. So if you find a lost dog or a lost cat, you can scan that cat and it will identify the dog or cat and hopefully reunite them with their owners. And I thought that was a fantastic use of uh, 
technology, looking at biometrics, looking at AI. Uh, and there was just so much innovation. Always the South Korean companies um, are living in an environment in South Korea where you have a very advanced view of technology. And I think it's one of the things that uh, means it's it's one of the showcases that is worth looking. And it's great that all these small companies get an opportunity to showcase what they're doing uh, on a global scale. Wow, thanks for the improving technology. I don't have to worry about losing my lovely pet. <laughs> all right, unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today's edition. But thank you, Professor Kim and uh, Ben, for letting us jump into the world of high tech. We appreciate it. All right, that's all for Within the Frame tonight. We will be back tomorrow with more in-depth stories. Thank you for watching and goodbye.